So there is a mistake in the order of service. This reflection is actually entitled, We All Rise Together. During our water and gathering service earlier this month, Robin introduced our theme for the year here at Beacon, Rooted in Relationship. She told the story of her son, Benjamin's anointing by Reverend Dr. Barber, and how the ritual was as much an anointing of her entire family as it was of Benjamin. She spoke of how Dr. Barber's own family put their hands on the shoulders of her family as Benjamin was being anointed. It was a powerful visual in my mind. And it actually reminded me of when my parents and I officially joined the First Baptist Church in Nederland, Texas. Something I probably haven't thought of in well over 30 years. <laughs> Although not as formal as an anointing, the simple ceremony of words concluded with a flood of some 600 people walking down those aisles to welcome us. Even as an extrovert, I was overwhelmed by that sense of welcome. <clears throat> It might interest you to know that um, my parents are still very active in that congregation. My mother not only sings with the regular choir, she also sings with what is called the Silver Tones, or the Senior Choir. <laughs> and my father is entering his 20th year as a lay prison minister. And I wonder about where my parents would be if my mother had not asked for help or felt she couldn't later come to that congregation herself because she was ashamed that her family was on the brink of falling apart. And I wonder again about where I would be if there wasn't this village of people surrounding my parents, supporting my parents so that they could support me. That Southern Baptist faith family helped my parents parent beyond their capacity. I was asked recently to describe family ministry. Family ministry is what I have always known and experienced in faith community when it is at its best. Family ministry is an approach to faith formation that requires intentional relationship building across all ages. And it recognizes that faith development occurs throughout our lives and wherever we are. Family ministry, therefore, embraces families of all kinds, not just families with children. <coughs> However, what we now know is that Parents are the most important piece of the faith formation system. We know this based on the findings of Pew Research and the Barna Group. Parental engagement as the primary religious ed educator is the number one factor of whether a child will continue to be involved in their congregation throughout their school years and even into adulthood. In other words... Parents of school-aged children are key to the growth of Unitarian Universalism. So, family ministry recognizes that families with children need significant attention. That's my job description. <laughs> <laughs> So Thule actually introduced me to a book last year that encapsulated my dream for what family ministry could be. The book is entitled Salsa, Soul, and Spirit, Leadership for a Multicultural Age, and it was written by this wonderful woman, Juana Bordas, who I got to meet at GA this past summer. In the book, Bordas outlines what she calls a new social covenant that lifts up three principles, the first of which we've already talked about this morning, Sankofa, 
the recognition that we must honor and respect the past in order to understand the present. The second is moving from I to we, moving from individualism to collective identity. And the third is mikasa e sukasa, which is a spirit of true generosity that holds collective cultures together. And focusing on that second principle of moving from I to we, Bordas explains how multicultural collectivist communities, or we cultures, have a strong sense of belonging and sticking together. And the community takes precedence over the individual whose identity flows from the collective. Collectivist communities also have highly defined rules or covenants and therefore change more slowly than individualist culture. And we cultures value group welfare, unity, and harmony. And because these communities are tightly woven, there is a wholeness in which differences can exist. Now, although Bordas is speaking of multicultural communities, religious communities such as ours strive to live into these values. Yes? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is a major challenge of our time. Amen. Because what we offer as a Unitarian, Universalist, covenantal faith community is now countercultural to what Bordas describes as an I oriented culture or what we now fully own as white supremacy culture, and specifically the aspect of white supremacy culture, which is individualism. So what we offer is countercultural, but it is also the antidote for what isolated families are experiencing. And unfortunately, many people, having grown up in our white majority culture, simply do not know how to be in community. Some examples. White supremacy shows up when a family is ashamed to ask for help, and so they remain isolated. White supremacy shows up in the embarrassment or discomfort a single person family might feel when they arrive on Sunday morning not looking like the hallmark picture frame photo of a family. White supremacy shows up when families would prefer to pay for it rather than experience the relationship building and spiritual growth that volunteerism offers because they simply don't have time. Truly keeping up with the Joneses is killing our faith communities. Now collectivism shows up when we invest in our faith community, knowing that our individual needs will be met, that our minds will be challenged and that our hearts will be broken open. Collectivism shows up when we are given second chances and third chances and welcomed back a thousand times because our covenant requires it of us. Collectivism shows up when we deepen our understanding of ourselves by being in relationship with each other, when our identity flows from the collective. <coughs> when we commit to learn, from multicultural collectivist communities, we have the opportunity to help families of all kinds swing the pendulum from I to we. And for families with children, this looks like parenting from the perspective of relationship, that village, instead of from competence and abilities. And ultimately, families of all kinds come to us looking for something different than what they are already experiencing. They come looking to us for support. So can we be the antidote? When family ministry looks like collectivism, we all rise together.